fiancé decided to be a 403 and obey a guy to live with him, but didn't expect that I'll find out. I am 31, was left by my GF 31, after five and a half years together completely out of the blue. We made it through quarantine both are asthmatic, with only one fight and haven't really fought once since, and I thought we had a very solid relationship. I am completely blindsided. Just a week or two ago she had said how grateful she was to be together and how unconditional her love was even if we weren't married yet she was in this for the long run. I became disabled in two different ways now, and so she has been taking care of me, but I still take care of her in other ways and take care of the house. I am not financially dependent on her, but I'm also not supporting myself at the moment. I work part-time, learning the family property management business, since I will take it over one day and am doing this until I can get back on my feet slash fix my ear and wrists. She works with disabled people so this is probably not a deal breaker for her. She said how much she cared for me and didn't mind doing it at all. She would even work two jobs if it came down to it, but this isn't even necessary. There was no indication of anything wrong with our relationship in fact it was the opposite. Then she left for Hawaii for a friend's wedding. A few days after she returned, she decided to end things. This is a bit of a long one, but I wanted to provide as much context as I could. Feel free to ask me any other details. She has always wanted to go live in Hawaii or somewhere tropical. I had no issue with this and wanted to do the same either there, Australia or New Zealand were on both of our lists. We wanted to move to NZ before I was injured and then COVID hit. Even though I was unable to go on this trip, I encouraged her to go and have a very good time with her friends. We've always been able to do our own things we both surf but I like fishing. She likes going to cafes or art museums or walking around with friends and shopping. She said that being over there she felt truly at home and enjoyed the independence of being able to do what she wanted when she wanted. The day before the wedding she found out that her little sister had been broken up with by her boyfriend of 14 years because he was tired of taking care of her as she is suffering from a skin condition and wanted to party instead of stay at home way oversimplified but it's what's relevant. GF was very distraught because they sister plus her ex had been high school sweethearts and it was like losing a brother. I told my GF that her sister could stay with us but she said she can stay with her parents. Her parents had actually kicked my girlfriend out at the age of 20 or 21 and then her sister left as well, so this was a little surprising. She took her sister and her sister's boyfriend to live with her, who were both 18 at the time, and took care of food and rent. The family has since made up after the mother was diagnosed as bipolar. We didn't talk very much after telling me about their breakup, but I figured it was because she was sad, reunited with old friends, and just hanging out doing her own thing which is nothing out of the ordinary. She told me at the wedding that she started talking and then flirting a bit with a guy, but it was never going to lead anywhere since she loved me so much. It was more because she hadn't felt this free in a while. However, she liked the feeling of being desired and knew she had to tell me. Even though she didn't cheat, she feels like she basically metaphorically did and she owes it to me to end things. I trust her that she didn't, but that because she was tempted she feels she doesn't deserve this and I don't deserve that. I am not particularly the jealous type I don't see a bit of harmless flirting that doesn't lead anywhere to be worth ending a solid relationship. It's an issue, but perhaps a bit of relationship counseling could heal it. But I wouldn't just throw it all away over that and did not make it sound like this was a deal breaker for me. Then again, that is just my perspective because she feels it's unfair to continue being in a relationship after having those thoughts about being single. Does anyone make it through an entire relationship for decades without ever having those thoughts once or twice? I don't think it's as big of a deal as she does, and I have had those same thoughts early on in our relationship before we were official so I don't hold it against her. She does also have a habit of self-sabotaging in order to make her do something she may not otherwise do, and I think this is an example of that. I think it was the Catholic guilt she was raised with that makes her feel like she needs to throw everything away at times and stone. She will punish herself to the extreme if she does something slightly wrong, and it has been an issue in our relationship because I don't think she needs to do that for something trivial. I vividly think this might be a big reason why she flirted and then told me. This was the initial reason brought up or why she wanted to end things.
After my shock and taking some time to process we talked a bit more that evening. She then said she wanted to move to Hawaii and that this was the first time in her and her sister's lives that they were stable enough to make that move. I said that I would have had no problem moving to Hawaii and didn't know why I had to be excluded from that plan, other than currently because I have half an eardrum and can't go on a plane. She didn't need to break up with me to move there or help her sister move there. However, she thinks that her sister who is even more careless slash unhygienic than her, and I would not be able to live together which I'll get to after. She also said if she stayed with me here, she might regret not ever moving there and exploring the island by herself. She stated that this experience could be a bonding moment for her and her sister but to me, it sounds like she is just moving in to take care of her sister just shifting who she is caring for from me to her and then using Hawaii as an excuse. Day of their breakup, she had mentioned being very worried about her sister being single for the first time in her adult life finding housing and being taken care of while she heals, but she is 27 and not a child anymore and her whole family lives here. I almost wonder if this is the reason to take care of her sister is why she sabotaged the relationship but doesn't yet realize that or want to admit it. It seems like the flirting was to force her hand to go and make this move. I just don't see how she could have a change of heart in under a week. She is a very laid-back person. I'm a bit more controlling, around hygiene specifically, and a bit of a germaphobe. I have a very weak stomach and bowel issues, so I try to be very conscious of food safety, and it annoys her having to wash her hands after touching raw chicken or eggs or washing lettuce that's come out of a pre-washed salad even though we have found bugs and a spider in them before. I do most of the cooking anyway, but she says she is afraid to start because I might get mad. I don't get mad, but I explain to her when she does something unsafe and she doesn't like that I sometimes watch her. I think that the times that I'm controlling are usually pretty reasonable. I don't keep her from seeing her friends. I don't control who she communicates with, who her friends male or female. None of the typical overbearing controlling boyfriend type behaviors you guys might be wondering about come from me. Maybe I need to pick my battles better. But when it comes to IBS and a weak stomach slash immune system, I feel like these requests are pretty valid like handling food with clean hands or using hand sanitizer after touching a high contact surface somewhere and then eating or touching me. I don't think I am. Controlling in other aspects besides that, but for her, she feels like if she does something slightly wrong and I bring it up it's because I'm mad at her. This is never the case but I guess my tone just kinda sucks sometimes because I've been going through a lot of stress since becoming disabled and losing my job because of that. I think it's a tone issue but I've been actively working to improve this and be very patient and more relaxed. She said I had improved but it wouldn't work with her sister and would stress me out too much and not just that she felt she was living in my world and not in her own that she had carved out. She moved into my apartment five years ago, like six months after we started dating. We had been co-workers, then friends while we dated other people. But a few months after both our relationships ended we reconnected, then hooking up, then a brief break because I didn't want a relationship yet. Then I asked her out after she said how much she wanted to be with me and how much I had missed her and thought it was stupid to wait because she is an amazing person. I know some people struggle with moving into someone's place and it's better to find somewhere together. But it's right by her favorite surf spot and it has stayed very cheap while rent prices have exploded around us. I don't know how else to let her carve her own space because I don't feel I am really preventing it. But maybe she can't do it in a relationship I really don't understand. I don't know how to let someone carve their own path if they don't bring that up, but I want to be able to make room for it. How can I do that? I don't know if flirting is as big of a deal breaker and she thinks it is, but maybe you guys can help me understand that. Maybe it's more than flirting and wanting to be single as well. Should I try to salvage this or just give up? I don't know if the reasons given were all legit, but I do trust her to tell me the truth and I guess I am just looking for any advice because right now, I don't know what to do or what to think you like my world just came crashing down around me and I would love some other perspectives than my own or advice on the matter. If you made it this far, thank you. Any advice or thoughts on the matter are greatly appreciated.